Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Dear friends, for us Catholics, this month of June is the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The Sacred Heart was pierced for our sins, and it shed its last drops of blood for our redemption. The same saving blood of Jesus is sprinkled anew upon us in the Holy Eucharist. The immaculate flesh of the Lamb of God is offered up for our salvation in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. For this reason, the month of June is also dedicated to the Most Holy Eucharist. The Sacred Heart and the Holy Eucharist are one and the same thing. The Sacred Heart is the flesh of Jesus in its very core, pierced by our transgressions, lacerated by our pride. The Sacred Heart of Jesus obtains for us the grace of penance and opens up before us a shelter of true love, a haven of mercy. Inside the Sacred Heart of Jesus, all penitent men and women, contrite for their sins and trusting in God's mercy, are called to dwell in safety and peace. What are the main virtues of the Sacred Heart? The Lord Jesus told us, Learn of me that I am meek and humble of heart. Thus the month of June is supremely humility month. Let us celebrate meekness and humility month with great fervor and devotion. But how? How can we best celebrate humility month? to honor God and be saved. Let us listen to a man celebrated for his meekness and his humility. He was not a priest. He was poor. He loved all men in brotherly charity. He praised God for the beauty of the world. He revered every creature, great and small, as mirrors of the splendor of God, the Creator. He was called Francis and was born in Assisi. I recommend seeing the beautiful exhibition about him at the National Gallery in London. St. Francis of Assisi was meek, humble, poor, and loving. He wrote three letters. One letter is to his fellow friars. Another letter is to all priests in the world. A third letter is to all the laity. And now what do you think is the main topic in each of his letters? Birds and flowers? No. Fraternal embrace? No. Holy poverty? No. In all his letters, St. Francis speaks mostly about the Holy Eucharist. So if we praise St. Francis as meek and humble, let us learn from him how best to celebrate Humility Month. We best celebrate Humility Month through loving God more in his sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist. This is why today our dear children will make their first Holy Communion. This is why today we will walk across town in procession following Jesus carried by the priest in the monstrance. But allow me to quote at length our beloved St. Francis, a truly meek and humble and poor man. One, letter of the humble St. Francis of Assisi to all the friars, religious members of his Franciscan order. I conjure you all to show all reverence and all honor possible to the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
in whom the things that are in heaven and the things that are on earth are pacified and reconciled to Almighty God. Call to mind, priests, my brothers, what is written in the law of Moses, how those transgressing even materially died by the decree of the Lord without any mercy, how much more and worse punishments he deserved to suffer, who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has esteemed the blood of the testament unclean by which he was sanctified and has offered an affront to the spirit of grace. For man despises, soils, and treads underfoot the Lamb of God when, as the Apostle says, not discerning and distinguishing the holy bread of Christ from other nourishments. Hear ye, my brothers, if the Blessed Virgin Mary is so honored as is meet because she bore him in her most holy womb, if the Blessed Baptist trembled and did not dare to touch the holy forehead of God, if the sepulcher in which he lay for some time is venerated, how holy, just, and worthy ought he to be who touches with his hands, who receives with his heart and his mouth, and proffers to be received by others him who is now no more to die, but to triumph in a glorified eternity on whom the angels desire to look. Consider your dignity, brothers, priests, Franciscans, and be holy because he himself is holy. Second, now let me quote Gentles and Francis's letter to all priests in the world. So that is sent to me as well, as a priest, not a Franciscan. Let us all consider let us all consider, O clerics, the great sin and ignorance of which some are guilty regarding the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most holy name and the written words of consecration. For we know that the body cannot exist until after these words of consecration. For we have nothing and we see nothing of the Most High himself in this world except his body and blood names and words by which we have been created and redeemed from death to life. But let all those who administer such most holy mysteries, especially those who do so indifferently, consider among themselves how poor the chalices, corporals, and linens may be where the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is sacrificed, and by many it is left in wretched places and carried by the way disrespectfully, received unworthily, and administered to others indiscriminately. Are we unmindful that we must needs fall into his hands? Three, finally, let me quote the letter of the meek St. Francis to all the faithful. Now, this is sent to you, dear friends. We ought indeed to confess all our sins to a priest and receive from him the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who does not eat his flesh and does not drink his blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Let him, however, eat and drink worthily because he who receives unworthily eateth and drinketh judgment to himself, not discerning the body of the Lord, that is, not discerning it from other foods. But all those who do not do penance, and who do not receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, but who give themselves to vices and sins, and walk after evil concupiscence and bad desires, and who do not observe what they have promised. Corporally, they serve the world and its fleshly desires and cares and solicitudes for this life. But mentally, they serve the devil, deceived by him whose sons they are and whose works they do. Blind they are because they see not the true light, our Lord Jesus Christ. They have no spiritual wisdom, for they have not in them the Son of God, who is the true wisdom of the Father. But let all know that wheresoever and howsoever a man may die in criminal sin without satisfaction, 
when he could satisfy and did not satisfy, the devil snatches his soul from his body with such violence and anguish as no one can know except him who suffers it. Unquote from St. Francis of Assisi. Dear friends, the one who wrote those words was so closely configured to the Lord Jesus that even the five wounds of Christ appeared on his limbs and his side. St. Francis was such a faithful servant of Jesus that God worked through him a revolution of love and sanctity with thousands of men and women joining the orders he had founded and millions joining his third orders with such marks of divine favor as the sacred stigmata and the miraculous spread of the Franciscan family, we can be sure that what we just heard St. Francis teach about the Most Holy Eucharist is the truth. We can be sure that his teaching expresses the will of God. We will do well if we follow his advice, always growing in faith, love and public reverence towards the Most Holy Eucharist. In conclusion, let us now prepare to attend with increased devotion the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. After that, let us take to our streets following our Divine Savior in the monstrance. Let us pray for all men to encounter Christ the Savior in the sacrament of his love while there is time. Such is the best preparation for them and us for the final encounter with Christ our judge after we die. That encounter will lead to eternity, either blessed with Christ or cursed without Christ. Let us make the best possible use of time worshiping Christ our Redeemer in the sacrament of his love. Then we will not fear our final judgment, for it will reveal to us Christ without the Eucharistic veil. We will see him whom we will have believed and worshipped under the meek and humble externals of bread and wine, the food of our souls. Friends, in this month of June, in this meekness and humility month, may our Blessed Lady, who procured the flesh and blood of her Son Jesus from her most pure body, teach us to become meek and humble of heart like her divine Son, our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.